Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm James Mayo. Uh, I'm the founder of 8 Circus Studios. Um, we're building uh, blockchain-based games. Um, and like our long-term vision is uh, we care deeply about the metaverse. Um, and uh, trying to figure out how to contribute to it. Uh, we don't intend to own it. Uh, the metaverse is something that exists way beyond us, and even if we wanted to, we couldn't own it. But, um, but yeah, we wanna, we wanna try and figure out how to manifest it. And uh, short term, uh, our objective is to try and drive the adoption of blockchains. So um, I'm curious, who here is doing development in blockchains and blockchain-based games? Okay. Um, anybody play blockchain games? Okay. All right. Cool. Um, so let's see. I guess we'll we'll start here. Um, so talking about the metaverse, uh, we have uh, Ready Player One. This is actually not what we're talking about when we're talking about the metaverse. Um, Ready Player One, the uh, the metaverse that they had was uh, what do they call it? Massively online. Uh, reality simulator is what it was called, and it's made by one person, it's one manufacturer. Um, we actually draw our source material from uh, William Gibson and Neuromancer, uh, or this is Snow Crash, it looks like it crashed in the process of loading, so. Uh, but that's Neil Stevenson, and um, I think he gets credit for coining the term metaverse. So that was, I think, in 92 is when that was coined. Um, so the metaverse, actually what we really like from both Stevenson's works and Gibson's works is sort of this digital uh, frontier. It's like the digital Wild West. And um, it's cyberpunk oriented, uh, really gritty, and um, very edgy. We were really stoked because we got noticed by William Gibson, uh, but uh, probably not the way that we wanted to. I don't think he was really stoked <laughs> about our shepherding of his IP. So um, as you always do, you know, when you get this, uh, this sort of response, you look for comfort in the comment section. And uh, so this is one of the comments from a contributor. They're saying, this sounds a lot like some gamer bros wanted to make an MMO but couldn't raise the money. Uh, so their immediate answer was blockchain. Nothing about a metaverse with a digital economy requires a blockchain. Credit cards and SQL work faster and better. Uh, we have a, a, a great in the process project manager. Do I need a blockchain? There's one response, no. Uh, last one, seems like uh, this is in response to somebody asking, hey, what's the deal? Why is Gibson, uh, you know? crapping on these guys, it says, seems like they're, this is 8 Circus Studios, seems like they're saying that having cryptographically watermarked virtual items will make what happened in their video game world more real legit. But they are getting their cyberpunk canon all wrong, and it's bumming the oracle of cyberspace out. So that didn't, if we wanted to feel better, that didn't help. Uh, but uh, I want to I highlight a couple things from those comments. There's actually some really interesting um, perspectives there. And uh, I want to talk about them a little bit later in the uh, presentation here. But um, so my background is, is, is as a producer. And as a producer, uh, we basically focus on a couple of key things. The first thing that we focus on is the schedule. And then we have to focus on the budget. Uh, the teams to develop the products, uh, and then we have to pay attention to the market. And so that is one of the things that, that we've noticed in terms of blockchain development is a couple of trends. Um, and so in the games industry, there's massive change, and we're seeing a lot of it right now, uh, especially around like how products are distributed. You know, you're seeing Epic, and you're seeing um, like uh, Discord and Twitch and these platforms making distribution available to uh, game developers. Um, we also have a couple of other trends that are happening. So we've got this great creative swell of, of, um, of this kind of creative culture. And this creative culture, uh, it transcends even game developers now. So we're seeing this inside of games themselves. So with like Minecraft and we're seeing uh, Fortnite, they're putting a creator um, component in their game. Uh, you also see the ability to distribute these, um, uh, these titles. Uh, 
There's another thing that's happening too, which is uh, cross-play. And this is actually more important than you might think for the metaverse. Uh, cross-play is actually where you're um, able to, with uh, the various platforms, have an online experience. And uh, the platforms being uh, like the Xbox, uh, PlayStation, and it would also be PC. Um, games like Fortnite and Rocket League, and we have also uh, Warframe. So the reason why this is um, really important for the metaverse is more for the audience. Uh, so what we're seeing is this great creative swell. Uh, we're seeing the ability to distribute titles. We're also seeing the um, sophistication increase for the player base. They're getting used to this sort of proto-metaverse where it doesn't really matter what portal you're using to access your gameplay experience. There's a persistent um, experience that's kind of always on. Um, we're seeing another trend, too, uh, w w with regards to the metaverse, which is um, we have Shannon Loftus. She's the GM of Xbox Game Games. She's saying that the metaverse is already here. Uh, this was at a keynote speech in, I think it was 2017, April 2017. She was speaking to uh, an Intel workshop. We also have uh, Tim Sweeney, who Shannon referenced, and uh, she was saying that uh, Tim has also been talking about the metaverse. This tweet was from December 21st last year. He's talking about the four hard problems that need to be solved for the, uh, the metaverse framework. Uh, there's transactions, data persistent, code isolation, and forward compatible code evolution. Um, what's interesting about this is you have people who are in the industry making um, pretty significant decisions for their uh, products, um, also aware of the metaverse, talking about it publicly. Um, so I want to get back to this. This was the, do I need the blockchain? And the answer is no. Technically, actually, you don't really need the blockchain. What you would need is all of the competitors to sort of work together, collaborate, and uh, come up with a protocol that would uh, be accepted and that they would use to implement the metaverse. But what's really interesting is that the blockchain uh, actually serves that function right now. And it actually solves one of the problems that Tim was talking about. It's the second problem which is persistence. Um, in the blockchain space, we would call this uh, something like immutability. But persistence is actually something that uh, we haven't had until now, at least until the blockchains have arrived. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about how we're applying the blockchains uh, in the concept of persistence and as it relates to the metaverse. So. One of the things that we're doing is a little bit different than I think other blockchain-based companies. We're, we're doing a more traditional blockchain development uh, framework. And so our focus primarily has been on how do you solve the usability problems. Uh, once you solve the usability, you kind of solve the suckage that keeps people from getting into um, having the fun of a game. And then from the uh, position of observing people who are having fun, you get to get an understanding of what they value. And then once you understand what they value, um, then you can figure out what's meaningful. And then that is where you can begin to suss out what should be persistent or what should exist um, in, a, in a meta state. And so these are the titles that, uh, that we've developed with a partnership uh, at the end there with Mankind Reborn. So I'll talk about this a little bit. So Alien Arsenal, that's a uh, mobile title that was released in um, May, May 2018. And uh, this title was set out to prove a number of things. We asked a couple of questions. Question number one was, uh, can we solve a bunch of the usability problems that people encounter with blockchains? And so if you've never used a blockchain before, or played a blockchain-based game, there's a bunch of steps that you typically have to go through in order to start um, getting into the title. Uh, the first one is you have to figure out which blockchain you want. Then you have to figure out which wallet do you want on the blockchain. Then after that, it's typically uh, uh, a challenge to get the cryptocurrency of choice. So you'll have to figure out which exchange you want to go to. Then after that, it's uh, associating your bank account with an exchange. And oftentimes, that, that requires KYC, which is know your customer, anti-money money laundering, at least in the States. Um, 
so we decided to try and shortcut all of that and just offer uh, the player an ability to get a wallet, they get a vault that can store their aliens, which are the, the characters that exist in the game. Uh, and we also airdropped people five 8-bit tokens, which was a part of our um, Wave 2 token sale last year. Uh, the second title, Blasted Planet, is developed in Unity. Um, this is basically, you can think of it like Tamagotchi meets uh, Planet in a Bottle. The objective is to, uh, to keep your planet alive and you give it enough uh, sun or enough rain, you clear the pollution out. Um, Alien Arsenal was actually built in React Native. So we've got React Native, we've got uh, Blasted Planet being developed in Unity, and then Project Genesis, that's our flagship title, uh, that's being developed in Unreal. And Project Genesis is going to showcase basically three categories of um, assets that will exist uh, on the blockchain. Mankind Reborn, that is uh, also built in Unreal. And this is a title that uh, is cyberpunk. And <clears throat> you, you, uh, when you get into the game, you'll notice that the, the, the folks in there are quite trolly. They're very, um, very hard-edged, so a lot of griefing goes on. And so one of the things that we're going to develop in conjunction with Mankind Reborn is creating a, uh, an apartment building that exists on the blockchain, and this apartment building um, has keys to apartments or flats, and these keys um, are, are tokens. Now these tokens, excuse me, uh, these tokens unlock your apartment, which really doesn't sound like that big of a deal, um, except when you're in Mankind Reborn, people are always stealing things from each other. And so one of the things that is super valuable is having a secure location. Um, this uh, apartment building will be accessed from Project Genesis and My Mankind Reborn and will be, I think, the first uh, meta building that uh, will be on the Ethereum blockchain. Decentraland might have us beat. That's another, uh, 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 that's another company that's uh, got a bunch of colleagues of ours. Um, they're building land on the blockchain. So. Um, so talking about the components, so we have uh, the first thing that I think characters or players are going to care about is characters. These are avatars. Um, they're built using the technology that we uh, built for Alien Arsenal. And uh, these are characters that can live forever on the blockchain. They'll have a no cap for their level. Um, and what they'll be able to do is evolve over time. So they'll have experiences. Um, we can build in even the ability to, um, to own items and, uh, and then customization as well. Uh, the next thing that uh, we'll be putting on the blockchain is property. Um, and it won't be all property that's on the blockchain. Uh, a lot of the property that players will be able to experience won't be blockchain based, but there'll be uh, very large um, systems uh, ranging from the apartment buildings that we were talking about to cities, to uh, countries, uh, into parcels of land, then it gets into planets, um, all the way up to, to galaxies and universes. Um, and then finally, the rest, uh, the rest of the items that, uh, that will exist oops, will um, have a certain economic weight. So a lot of folks are putting like swords or shields. Um, these, these might be good cases. For us, we're going to start bigger. Um, these are giant galactic space stations that exist. And, uh, and uh, they have also some code that allows a sort of economic function so that they not only uh, tr can charge rent, but um, they provide uh, access to resources. Um, all right. And finally. Um, so, so developing on the blockchain is particularly challenging, and one of the things that we've tried to do is, is actually make it easy, or as easy as possible. So we've tried to uh, develop in the engines that are available that are pretty consistent to uh, what game developers are developing in, um, and using the technology uh, that uh, each of them uh, kind of favors. 
Um, and what we're seeing is a couple of trends. So we've sort of already outlined the fact that uh, you know, we've got this massive creative swell. We've also got an incredible um, uh, uh, ability to distribute and communicate our, uh, our products out to the market. Um, and then we also have thought leaders who are talking actively about the metaverse. And so it seems as though there's a pretty significant wave uh, that the metaverse is coming and that uh, the question will be for all of us who are doing blockchain game development, you know, where do we want to be when that wave arrives? Um, what's really interesting is if we're doing any work or if any of you are doing any work on the blockchain, your fingerprints are already uh, having an impact on the development of, of the metaverse as it is. Um, when it will come to fruition, um, probably be a number of years yet, but these are the first sort of starting days um, where the metaverse is beginning to manifest itself. Um, and I think that's, that's it. So thanks, guys. Cool. Do you have any questions for James about the metaverse? Can you just wait for the microphone and just say who you are and where you're from? So we can pick it up on the recording. Hi, uh, Rob from the Netherlands. Um, That's what, which company you're with, sorry? Uh, I'm from a company called the GPS Play, okay. location based games. Cool. Um, I was just wondering so you're building, um, so you're, you're reusing um, your blockchain technology across multiple games, right? And so do you think? Will become adopted by other companies. That's your goal, or is it just your own games that will use this uh, specific type of blockchain? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, on the in the games industry, at least. Uh, so I've been in the games industry for about thirty years, and one of the great things uh, uh, that I've noticed is how um, quickly people are to share their experiences. So I think that's our primary goal: is how do we sort of uh, get through the front door, and if we're going to take some lumps, we'll, we'll take the lumps because we've got pretty deep game development experience, so we can kind of see what's coming, uh, and then share with other people um, our experiences, take notes, and uh, if they want to use our technology, awesome, uh, but if not, that's okay too. Um, there's a lot that, that we can probably all learn from each other as we're in this space. Yeah. Any other questions? Just checking. Uh, the, so, Mankind Reborn is actually live now, is it? As a as a game? Uh, they're or doing they're doing private alphas. Okay. Yeah. And and Project Genesis, what's the ETA on that? Do you have one yet? Uh, we're going to have an open alpha in the middle of uh, summer. Okay. So probably so June, July. Cool. Yeah. Lovely. Great. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks, guys.